on June 23, 1996, N64 was released in Japan. The results were nothing less than phenomenal. Within hours, over 500,000 systems cleared the shelves. On September 29th, N64 is scheduled for release in North America. The system is about to change, but before it does, we decided to invite three of the best gamers in the country to put it to the test. This is N64. This is it, the power of N64, the driving force in the next generation of video games. With 64-bit technology, you're a witness to moves and graphics that no other system can match. 360-degree viewing, three-dimensional graphic interpretations, anti-aliasing for crisp graphics, and too many other things that are just going to blow your mind. Welcome to N64. Greetings, gentlemen. Your journey begins this way, and from this way we go that way. Yo, what is this? Yo, it's not in the dark in here. Okay. Hey guys, how you doing? So, I understand you're here to find out about the Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64, we call it that because it happens to be the world's first 64-bit hardware. Now, I could go on and on about all the technical stuff, but I think it's easier for me to explain that as I show you the game. Hello! So let me jump into the game. You notice that Mario's standing in this huge field outside of a big castle. Now, if I take the control stick and I just move it a little bit, you notice that Mario starts to tiptoe. I move it a little bit farther, Mario starts this kind of slow walk. Crank it and he goes full-out sprint. Whip it in circles. Full 360-degree control. 360. Okay, now I'm going to cruise up into this castle, because that's where most of the levels are. Go, little man, go. Whee. What kind of skills do you have, little man? Now that I'm inside of the castle, before I go show you a level, I'd like to show you some of the cool things that Mario can do. Now, I'm sure you've seen traditional Mario games. You know that Mario can do things like climb and jump on enemies. But now Mario's got some stunts. Check out Mario, man, doing those backflips. I push the Z and then push jump. <laughs> Oh. Mario does a layout double backflip. Yeah. Awesome. If I like run along, push Z jump, whoa, Mario jumps a mile. Oh, look at that. Did you see him climb? I can get Mario to do things climbing trees. I can get Mario to do things by hanging on ledges. I can do a ton of stuff with Mario. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, you see the way he went to that door? I'm kidding. Here we go! full 360 degree control. Okay, so I'm gonna cruise along here and jump into this picture. Oops. <laughs> hey, how'd you do that? Actually, it was pretty hard. We had a bunch of R&D guys with busted heads. <laughs> this level's kind of cool because there's actually, there's swimming levels in the game, there's snow levels, there's other stuff. This level actually involves swimming as well as kind of some traditional platform stuff. However, now it's all happening in a 3D world. That's awesome. No. 
smooth. There's one other cool area I'd like to show you in the game before we move on to the other products. And that's Bowser. telling you about Mario 64, but I think it's time we move on to Armand, who's going to show you Pilot Wings. Now that you just finished playing Mario and done a crash course in Techno Babble 101, it's time to talk fun. What's really different about Pilot Wings is that you get to deal with more than just airplanes. You've got hang gliders, you've got rocket packs, and you've got gyrocopters. It's the most unique flight simming game you've ever played in your life. When you're playing the game, you feel like that you're actually in the game. For example, in this hang glider level, there's gonna be some range you gotta fly through. That's the first part of it. Now you gotta be sure that you're making yourself steer really steady because the mountains are in close, okay? Now when you go through all the rings, make sure that you pull the joystick down to swoop your plane upward. Swoop just like that, just like that. When you're going in for the landing, you want to use your A button, or commonly known as the blue button. Use it to slow down speed if you're going too fast. Come in for the landing, and it's an A plus if you hit it. Yo, this is unreal. When you get to the point where you think you're actually good at this game, <laughs> try this. Try getting at least a silver or gold medal in all three events, and you're going to open your way up into some new hidden levels, like the Cannonball stage. One thing that's really cool about the Cannonball is that you can use the R button to change your camera angle, and that way you get a true feeling of, of yourself being in a real-time 3D environment. The Jungle Hopper. Haha, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. In this area, the object is to jump across the USA. Now you want to use your analog joystick once again to make sure that you get the longest jump possible. You jump over this building here, and then you go around the bend and try to find the best way to get to the actual goalpost. <laughs> You've still got one more game to play. Shadows of the Empire. I guess you two guys are here to see Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I guess I'll uh, cut to the chase and get right to the game, which is my favorite part. One of the really unique things about Star Wars is that there are several different game types in this game, actually. You fly a snow speeder over the ice world, you're a guy in a corridor in a maze type level. There he is. You actually fly in a spaceship. You can do ride a swoop bike, which is kind of like a big speeder bike across the land. And one of the coolest parts in the game that I really like is these big walker guys.
can actually fly around them and wrap them up with a tow hitch. And you can circle them just like in the movie. And then you can trip them up. I love that part. The world is in real 3D, so I can look around and go anywhere I want. But I can also aim and shoot up at enemies that are high, low. I can strafe and run and shoot in different directions. You're out there, Henry. I can jump over objects. I can actually duck and fire at some of the stormtroopers. I can get different weapons to fight the flamethrower to kill these, these big ice monsters. Okay, this is the flying over the Star Destroyer. And here you actually can zoom in to the cockpit. In every level, there's different views. You can zoom in and out. You can watch the guy from a third-person view, or you can actually watch from a first-person view. Here I have to destroy all these TIE fighters, watch out for asteroids, as you can see the explosions here are just as good as the other level. Whoa! Yeah. I just love that part. Here's the swoop bike level. See, I'm chasing this gang inside the town. See how fast it gets. I can zoom out and look in a third person view. See, I can see all the walls. I gotta try and bump them and stop them from getting to loot. I really like how fast this level moves. It's, it's, it's pretty overwhelming at first when you're inside the narrow uh, confines of the town, but you get out later on and you actually get out onto the desert and you go over the Sarlacc pits and you have to do the jumps and go through the canyon. Insane. Here I can go anywhere I want and look at things. I can um, search the walls and stuff and find hidden items. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just some of Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Whoa, those are three great games. We've only scraped the surface. There's there more? more? September 29th, N64 will be released in limited quantities. You know the date, you know the system, you know what to do, you don't want to wait. Change the system. You still want more?